this minus xi means I'm removing the modulus. This is greater, so it is this minus xi. This is lesser, so it is xi minus this, xi minus this. Okay. So what are the now? So if you now add it, what is happening is xi minus it is of the form xi minus something whenever it is less. So so that minus sum of all the elements which are less than xi, right? That is, let's say this is xi. These two elements are less than xi. Uh, my equation would come down to x2 minus x0 plus x2 minus x1 x okay uh, x0 x1 okay it's x3 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 uh, and x this is greater so x2 minus x3 so now if i uh, if i take this on an aggregate what i'm getting is all the numbers which are less than xi, I'm, uh, that is if I just add this together and if I co collect all the x3s together, 2 into number of elements which are less than x3 into sum of elements which are less than x3, 1 into number of elements which are greater than x3, sum of elements which are greater than x3. So that is how <coughs> the reduction happens. So yeah, uh, so please note that we are looking at complete two completely different information. One is sum, one is number of elements. So. This idea is how would you understand how, what is I mean how to go about the solution. So of course I can solve it in one data structure like what he said, or I could probably use two data structures because these both are completely independent information. So uh, okay, go to the next slide. So what what is used is I maintain two Fenwick trees, one which would give me. So assume I I go in order. Now I'm given the x coordinate order, so I go in order. I take x naught. Of course, x0 there is nothing to compute because uh, there is nothing before it. So I update, so I have two Fenwick trees and let x0 be this position. So I say that increment this position by 1. That means next time when someone asks me some query, I'll, I'll define my queries after some time. Uh, when someone asks me a query, I should be able to answer the query that I ask is number of elements greater than x and number of elements less than x. Number of elements greater than x can be number of elements greater than infinity minus. Means one can be written in terms of other. So yeah, uh, so I update update x naught here and I update that is I, I do a plus one here and I do a plus x naught here. So I maintain two Fenwick trees. One is to what are the queries that I must support? What are the element number of elements greater than x naught? Number of elements less than x naught. Second query is sum of coordinates greater than x naught. Sum of coordinates less than x naught. So uh, let's say I am I am only defining the first one, which is the number of elements. So let's say I am given an x naught. So uh, so le let's say I am given x i and I must query a data structure which says what is the sum of elements greater, greater than xi or less than xi for simplicity because I gave that the range of xi is between 1 and 2e6, 2e5. So, okay, uh, another thing you must know is uh, like time, the memory, how much memory can you declare in your program? You can declare at most, let's say, 5e6. It depends on that is what you do in the practice day, but uh, on an average, it will be around 5e6 to 7e6 uh, array range on the heap. That is uh, your global declaration. It means it will be up to 5e6 to 7e6 integer values you can declare in a program. After that, you probably get a set fault or something depending on what the settings is. So, uh, so xi. So I can actually declare an array which contains 1 to 2e5 elements because 2e5 is fairly low compared to 4e6. So let's say this is x0. Uh, so each time I, I encounter an xi, I increment this to 1. I can do that with my update operations. So this is xi. This is the block denoting xi. I can have one individual block for each element uh, because x ranges are fairly low. A homework exercise is what if x ranges are fairly high, which you can probably do it as a homework, which is not the top coder problem, but you can still solve it with the same complexity, even if you're dealing with x, x ranges up to 1e18. Uh, so let's say uh, this is the block symbolizing x, xi. So w once I insert xi, I just increment this by 1 by using update xi, comma 1. Once I do that, now if I want to query the number of elements less than or equal to xi, I'll just go for query xi minus 1 because xi minus 1 would give me the cumulative sum of all the ones until xi. That is what my query is. That is what I defined my Fenwick tree as. Query gives you what the cumulative sum is until xi. So 
since I'm incrementing by one for each xi, what I really get is the number of elements less than xi. That is, for example, I'm just going in order. For i is equal to one to n, and let's say I'm at the ith node now. Now all the nodes that have one are the ones that has been processed before. So if I do query x, xi, what I get is number of elements less than xi. Similar, and if you want the number of elements greater than xi, I just do a query of max minus query of xi. That is that is just uh, formulating it in terms of the prefix sum. So in this way, I can compute n less n gt. All that is left is how will I compute sum less and sum gt? Uh, again, instead of plus one, I would be doing a plus x naught at position x naught, and then I can compute sum less and sum gt. Now, I did not tell the difficulty of the problem at the beginning, but this was a top code of thousand problems. So, thousand problems are considered difficult. And you guys solve it in five lines. And once you know fan victory, you can probably code it in five, five minutes too. The, there is no complicated idea in this. The only complicated idea was how to remove the modulus. So, uh, yeah, next slide. So, uh, I have defined one dimensional binary index trees or one dimensional Fenwick trees. We will now go to two dimensional Fenwick trees. Two dimensional Fenwick tree, one dimensional Fenwick tree was i2 means low bit of, two power low bit of i numbers from I, before i. Uh, so, two dimensional Fenwick tree would be, let's say I, I am at position i, comma j, i, comma j, and uh, the low bit of i is r and low bit of j is c, then it defines the sum of elements in 2 power r into in this 2 power r into 2 power c sub rectangle. This would be i uh, 2 power r. This would be 2 power c. Uh, the loop invariants, the operations, all are same because it's just uh, an extension of one, one dimensional fan victory. So uh, how would you do a query and update? I'll, I'll, uh, the query would essentially be two for loops. Okay, so now what you're doing is you are decre decrementing the binary number of one i and you're also decrementing the binary number of another. So the complexity now would be log n whole squared because for every decrement in i, I will need to also update, I means I will need to do some bookkeeping for this also. So complexity would be log n whole squared, but the idea is again fairly simple. You can uh, look into the top code tutorial and if you have any doubts, you can again ask me uh, or any, anyone. Uh, so, and one problem you can try for two dimensional fan victory is, this is actually very basic. Anshuman just five minutes back told that the first problem he solved with fan victory was mat sum, which is directly the two dimensional version of it and not the one dimensional version of it. So the only hard part in this is you are given uh, x1, y1 to x2, y2. So, as as usual, you can define the sum in the sub rectangle. You can define the so. Okay, can anyone tell me how I am only given the primitive as sum from zero zero to x comma y? How will I define the sum from x one y one to x two y two? Two dimensional array. So yeah, uh, can anyone tell me how to uh, solve how to define the sum between x1, y1 and x2, y2 if the only primitive I'm given is the sum of sub rectangle between 0, 0 and x, comma, y. I'm given an f x, comma, y which is sum in the sub rectangle from 0, 0 to x, comma, y. That is all I'm given. You must say, uh, tell the sum in terms of f x, comma, f. This is x2, y2, x, you are saying x1, x1, y2. So how to define it is query this minus this minus this plus this that is basic inclusion exclusion because it's two dimension it comes to four, four numbers so yeah so please solve math sum we'll have a practice session now when you'll be sol solve math sum balance trees later go next this is very important when, when to use fenwick trees and most importantly when not to use fenwick trees operation must be associative an associative operation operation is that i for a b c i first apply it on a b and then apply it on c is equivalent to i apply it on b c and then means that is it's kind of parenthesis in this is the result of applying it like this let's say let's call this as f uh, is equivalent to result of applying it like this this is an associative operation. Plus is an associative operation. Uh, X plus Y plus XY is an associative operation. All of these are associative operations. But what really is required for a Fenwick tree is you require an inverse. Operation must be associative. If it's not associative, you should be looking at more properties of the operation and somehow making you should make it associative. 
if you intend to use any data structure which any commonly known data structure otherwise it should have an inverse for example i just i am given the cumulative sum how do i determine the sum from a to b i do f b minus f a minus 1 so this minus although it looks almost fairly obvious for example if instead of plus i do my i define my query as gcd i comma j which defines which gives me the gcd of all numbers from a i to a j this does not have an inverse so in which case i cannot do uh, use a fenwick tree for this so at in such things you must use seg tree you must use seg tree or uh, it's seg tree interval tree. there are lots of names which are fairly confused in the literature so idea is you must use any log making data structure which is not fenwick tree because there is no uh, there is no inverse operation same applies to matrix multiplication unless you are given that all these sub sub sequence matrices are non degenerate that is uh, whose determinant are non zero you will not be able to use this for product of matrices or product of matrices of course some it can be used uh, uh, because a inverse requires mod a to be uh, determinant a to be not equal to 1 so another operation is again f of x comma y is equal to x plus y plus x y for such operations please use seg tree and i would really suggest that you go go back and you know try to imagine how to do gcd the query i must support is change a to any any new number what is the gcd between i to j both of these in log n if you can support both of these in log n means uh, using secretary that will be great inversion in array of numbers is uh, let's say i less than j and a i greater than a j then that is an inversion that is uh, means let's say th i have 10 here and i have 7 here this is an inversion so inversion is a pair i comma j such that i less than j and a i greater than a j that is the indices Index, index i occurs before but the number is greater so can you find uh, the number count the number of inversions number of inversion pairs in the array in reasonable time again not n squared n squared is fairly obvious so you must do it in n log n and please also try to do it with fenwick tree the idea is to of course it can be solved with a lot of ways you can solve it in merge sort you can solve it with uh, seg tree or anything but please also try to do it with fenwick trees this can also be done with fenwick trees so the idea of giving this is do it with fenwick trees next one just one more point in the previous slide you were telling that if the operation doesn't have an inverse still a segment will work but if the operation is not associative then even you can't solve it even using yeah trigger. yeah that's just the point operation must be associative should be there even for seg tree but inverse need not exist for seg tree you are given a tree and then you are given two nodes so you are given a tree and then you are given a set of queries so so the set of queries would look like either you are given a and b and you have to report the length of the path between a and b you guys are aware of what a tree is right and you guys are also aware that between two nodes there is one and only one uh, path in a tree okay so you have to report the length of the path given a and b or if you are given k a and b then you have to report the kth node that lies on the path between A and B when you start from A. Assume that you have uh, 10 bar 5 nodes, 1 e 5 nodes, and let's say 10,000 queries. This is not, this is for the And then you are given several queries. Assume that there are 10,000 uh, 10, or 1 lakh queries that you are given. So every time you are given I and J, and you have to report the minimum in the array, part of the array that lies between I and J. Actually, this problem is known as RMQ which is range minimum query or if, you are, if I am asking for the maximum element then it's range maximum query so okay let me first define it formally what RMQ query is for indices i and j of course i and j lie between 1 and n query RMQ returns the index of the smallest element in the subarray a i to a j so like in this case if I did a query RMQ 3 to 7 so for the so this section of the array from 3 to 7 7 is the least element the index of 7 is 4 so my RMQ 3 7 is 4 is this part clear and we will be using one notation where this fn comma gn doesn't really matter but fn would be the pre-processing time and uh, gn would be the query time uh, you guys understand what is the query time what is the pre-processing time right so given an array you will do some pre-processing on it the time complexity for that is the pre-processing time for every query the amount of time that you take that is the pre uh, query time so okay can you come up with nice solutions at least 
this one thing you can do right for a, for every RMQ pair you store the answer and then when whenever query is received you uh, out, uh, output that in order one that you can do that you understand right yeah. for every IJ you store the answer beforehand whenever you get a query you report it yeah. 